Welcome to Extreme Reloading. This season, one of the things we're looking at is trying to answer the question, does annealing affect precision? We're just about ready to head out to the range to shoot session number five, five of six. Now, if you didn't watch all the previous videos, let me just catch you up on what we're doing. Over the course of this six sessions, I am shooting six different groups. Half of those 60 rounds are annealed using the annealies uh, machine and the other half of those 60 rounds are unannealed or using unannealed brass. In our first episode of this whole series I went through and carefully described the entire process. Now all of these rounds are extremely consistently prepared. I'm using 168.1 grain Sierra tipped match king bullets. All the powder charges using RL15 are weighed to exactly the same weight. No variation uh, in that whatsoever using my RCBS match master scale. Using CCI bench rest primers and once again those cases are prepared very, very consistently and uniformly. The only difference between those, of course, is that half of them, 30 of those rounds, are uh, annealed and the other half are not annealed. They're case, weight sorted, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so you get the idea. And what we've been doing is we've been going out to the range, or I've been going out to the range, and I'm shooting five shot groups. One time I'll shoot the annealed brass first and then the unannealed or standard brass, and then I'll flip it around and, and shoot it in the other order. I'm only shooting two groups each time I go out to the range uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to impart any barrel heating effects. Yes, I do have a barrel cooling uh, nice little device that works pretty slick. Uh, I could just let it sit there for a while and all that, but I'm not doing that. And the second reason why I'm doing it in this way is I don't want to introduce... Uh, shooter fatigue. You just kind of get tired of, of shooting uh, so many groups after a while and I want that to be very, very consistent uh, every time I go out. So, only two groups are being fired every time. One annealed and the other not annealed. We're just about ready to start session number five. Now, if this were a football game, it would not be looking too good for the annealed brass. In fact, the annealed is down three to one. And while this is not a football game, we don't care so much that the annealed brass had a worse uh, extreme spread on its group most of the time, three of the four times. Uh, what we're more concerned with is the measurement of that group in MOA. I'm shooting at 200 yards, so I'm always doing my calculations uh, in MOA. And when we're looking at those measurements, what we're seeing is that the unannealed or standard brass has an average or mean MOA of those groups of 0 0.9 while the annealed brass is sitting at 1.3 MOA. Standard deviation of those muzzle velocities taken from the lab radar chronograph, they're almost exactly the same, about a dozen feet per second each. Now that's actually still kind of high. Normally what I'm getting is I'll get down into the single digits. Yeah, sometimes still 10 but nine and, and even some sixes and sevens uh, feet per second standard deviation of muzzle velocities. And I think why that is, um, we're rarely breaking into single digits. I think why that is, is because this is federal brass. Now it's not so much that federal brass is bad or something like this, but I worked up the load for this Ruger Precision Rifle using Lapua brass. I think the world of Lapua brass, that is some really, really good stuff. And I worked up my load using optimal charge weight in Lapua brass. Now this still shoots pretty darn well in federal brass, but federal brass being a little bit different than Lapua, being a little bit different than Winchester and Nosler and Norma, we're probably not going to see uh, very consistently getting down into the single digits. We should be able to keep it into that 12, 13, 14, 15 
uh, feet per second range. Now, we've already got one session where I was way up in the 27s, not good at all. We're about ready to head out, like I said, session number five. Let's see how it goes. Annealed brass first, target upper left. I'll look a little high and to the right. Standard brass, upper right. Oh, that one went. Well, not the best shooting, I guess, on my part overall. I think I had shot previous sessions better as a shooter. Um, but um, I think I, I felt like, especially on that last group, I rushed some of my shots. And in fact, I called that last shot. Uh, so let's take a look at what we got here. This is my annealed group. I shot the annealed first this time. And what we have is, I broke the sub MOA, just barely, 0.98 MOA, and, but not a bad group. Uh, kind of a little bit high and a little bit uh, to the left, but um, not a bad group. And in fact, if I had done, I didn't, I didn't shoot ciders this time. Uh, normally I shoot my ciders here, and if I had done so, I probably would have done a slight adjustment, at least down. They would have been, you know, right over the top of that bullseye pretty nicely. Not a bad group. Uh, and then we, when we compare it to the unannealed standard brass, I didn't do so well. 1.15 MOA five-shot group. And yes, this is the one that I called, but the worst, or my extreme spread, was from here to here. That uh, is the uh, 1.15 MOA. This one was actually inside that group, so it really didn't matter. I don't have to kick it out. I can still call that five-shot group as it is. Again, shot at 200 yards. And what's interesting about this one, um, that is the worst group I have fired in this entire, now five sessions, with the unannealed or standard brass. 1.15 maybe is not, isn't too terrible, but this is a Ruger precision rifle, normally getting one MOA or less did a um, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 some MOA uh, around session number two, something like that. Boy, things really went well that day. The stars were lined up maybe, those sort of things. But here we are. End of session number five. Had a strong comeback. Um, running with our football analogy from earlier. Nice comeback on the part of the annealed brass. We've got session number six coming up in our next video of Extreme Reloading. We're going to finish shooting all these groups, run all the calculations, all the statistics, and answer the question, does annealing affect precision? Thanks for watching.